Um, I arrived into I arrived into Tirana yesterday, um, and then I met the lovely Johannes in my hostel Hello. this morning, and we have got the bus um, from Tirana to Barat. Um, the weather is doggo. The weather is so nice. It's so sunny, um, and we just there's a bus. Can you get into Barat to go into the centre, but we're just walking. Um, so we're just gonna head to our hostels and then I've got a walking tour, Johannes might come and we'll see we'll see where the day takes us. arrived in Barat at my hostel and it's really cute so I just thought I would show you. Um, so you've got these beds here, my mess, um, the sockets and lights and the bed which is really nice. Um, it's quite quiet tonight, it's just me and a couple of other people. You've got this mirror, lockers, and then the bathroom. How nice is this? We've got all the little shower keys. And the shower's so nice. And then the toilet. So yeah, it's it's really really lovely. A washing machine, kitchen, free breakfast. We'd love to see it. What you're seeing is the communal area and about to see the terrace of the hostel I stayed in in Barat. Um, I had such a good time here, it's such a lovely hostel and I spent lots of time with the volunteers and um, with Baffa who you're about to meet and also with a lovely lady called Katie from the UK. A romantic road of Magalem. Nice for a couple from elegant couple, but not for extra large American. <laughs> it's too much, we cannot move here, but a little bit struggling. <laughs> so we are passing by this way. 
Have you got? <laughs> I'm just climbing up to Barat Castle. Um, I should have filmed earlier because <laughs> it's, it's uphill and it's not very sweaty and red, so um, it's, it's not going well. But um, we're about halfway uh, and I have friends. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about what happened on my second night in Tirana. I've been weighing up whether to talk about it or not. I don't want to put people off solo travel. Um, I think there's so many pros and cons. This story is an obvious one, but honestly, it can happen anywhere. It happens in your hometown. I don't think you shouldn't travel because of it. And actually, there's more, all the more reason to talk about it because... It's good to be vigilant when you're travelling. I don't think you need to be paranoid, but it's good to know where your nearest hostel is. It's good to know that you have a power bank to charge your phone. It's good to take a rape alarm. And I'm so grateful for all those little things that I do prepare myself with. Let me let me not make this dramatic and just tell you what happened. I had spent the day with my friends Lua and Onomania, who I met in Barat. Um, I met them in my hostel and we 
we went to the fortress in Barat together. We did that walk together up to the top. And then we went for lunch together. And then we got the bus back to Tirana. Um, and then we went to... We went... I don't know where we went to. It was a bit messy. <laughs> we went um, somewhere. And then we went to KFC for food. Very authentic. Um, it was the end of Ramadan as well. So there was lots of celebrations going on in the city. It was a really cool night to be in, in Tirana. And then we went to a place called Radio Bar. Which is really cool. Really recommend checking it out there. Um, and then I... They walked me back to my hostel. Honor actually joked, are you sure you want to stay here? Because it was a bit sketchy. Um, anybody could walk in. There was no like security which surrounds some hostels. But I have also stayed in hostels that are more like artist hostel, which is what this one was. Um, or just more like nomadic, um, where you kind of come and go. It's very self-serve, um, that kind of situation. So it kind of didn't put me off, but it was a little bit uncomfortable, I had to be honest. But I was like, it's fine, I'm going to go to sleep, I'll charge my phone up, I'm leaving, like it's midnight and my bus is at eight, so I've just got a six hour sleep to get through. I went into my hostel and there was a guy on the desk, he wasn't the guy that checked me in, and he said, um, well he looked at me funny and I said, oh I checked in early and he was like, oh, okay. And I went up and I was immediately thirsty. So I took my water bottle back down to the kitchen to fill, walking past him again. And he said, he said, oh, where are you from? Starting conversation up. I said, the UK, you from Tirana? He said, yes, I'm from Tirana. Um, he said, are you travelling alone? I try not to be paranoid when I'm travelling, but if somebody asks you if you're alone, it's the sensible thing to say no I'm not so I said no I'm traveling with my two friends they're staying at a different hostel but they'd they were fully booked so I booked in here um but I'm traveling with them they're literally around the corner and he was like okay and he grabbed my hand I hadn't had time to not consent and he grabbed my hand and he kissed it and I was uncomfortable but at this point I was like this is like an Albanian custom I've not been familiar familiarized with in the few days I've been here I was like it's just you know how the French kiss on the cheeks I was like it's fine whatever um I was he was like oh what are you doing now I was like I'm gonna go to bed I'm just getting some water um and he was like I'll come for a drink with me and I was like no thanks I'm good and he was like oh please come for a drink and I was like no I'm fine and he kept pressing me and then he said come upstairs I've got a room upstairs come upstairs for a drink with me come to my room and I was like what the fuck um I was really confused because I thought he worked there so I was like how has he got room upstairs or like if he does then that's just a bit like what's going on and I, I asked him I said do you work here and he said yeah I do a bit of stuff for the owner and I was like what's happening and uh, I was just trying to get away at this point I was like right I'm just whatever I'm going to bed um and he then was just trying to grab for my hand he was just trying to grab at me I was at this point like walking faster towards the stairs he was like come to my room come to my room come for a drink come and come and see me come to me come to my room come for a drink he wasn't taking no for an answer he kept asking and then just telling me that he that's what he wanted I was kind of legging up the stairs at this point and he followed me I got my door shut and was just stood against my door so that he couldn't come in and I I was like I can't stay here tonight and I messaged Lua and Honor and I said do you guys mind coming back around the corner for me and they were like of course we're coming we're on our way and I thankfully I'd packed up most of my stuff before anyway so I just grabbed a few stray things put them in my spare bag I had a couple of like concerns at this stage one was that my battery was nearly dead I hadn't worried about it because I was like I'm just going to bed as long as I've got enough to get me back to my hostel I can get it charged but I didn't expect to be leaving my hostel again that night and the other thing was I'd met another woman who was in my room and I didn't want to leave her by herself but I knew I had to leave so I sent her a message um yeah and then I I was really worried to go back downstairs in case he followed me or in case he was downstairs or he tried to do anything um but thankfully he wasn't there and I just legged it um and then then I went to Honor and Lua's hostel um and they were so nice and um, they gave me a room to myself um they told me that they'd let the the Tirana network know um the hostel network and they also messaged the owner and said I don't know if you know but this has happened it's not acceptable um if you don't do anything about it we'll 
I don't know, blacklist you, whatever. And so the owner messaged me and he apologised, said he didn't know it happened. Um, and he asked me to give a description of the man so that he could kick him out if he was a long-term stay there. Um, which I appreciated. It's more than I think some people would do. Um, I don't know if, you know, if it was his best mate or everyone, if actually if he would have done anything about it, but I had to take the pinch of salt and I appreciated that he was said that he was going to do something about it because it could it would have just been easy to just ignore it and I feel like lots of people would so I'm glad that Honor and Lua were there they gave me so much comfort and I felt safe in knowing that they were around the corner but I know that I would have been strong enough to get myself out if I needed to like I said earlier I'm glad that I carry a rape alarm I'm glad that I carry a torch I'm glad that I knew where my nearest hostel was so it's just about being vigilant and observant this can happen anywhere it can happen in your hometown um I was frustrated that it happened on my first night of well it wasn't my first night of my travel but in the first country that I was visiting on my month long travel um but I just don't think it should put you off um I think it's important to know that these things can happen and that you're stronger than you think you are and just to be aware of what's going on and what your surroundings are so you can get to a place of safety. I was also so reassured by how much the new hostel did for me. They couldn't give me the room for free, but they knocked a huge chunk off as well. Um, and they were they were really helpful. They gave me loads of sugar for the shock. Um, they were really, really nice. They went above and beyond. Really recommend the hostel. So there will be a video in here now for Tirana Backpacker Hostel, um, which I really recommend um such a nice ambience as well even before I'd been in the garden part of the hostel with Lou and Honor even before I went back to mine and um it's such a lovely hostel um so really recommend it there you'll get the tour now um but that's the end of my spiel and um go safe if you're traveling but do go traveling and just be aware that there's some people out there that just don't take no for an answer but kick them in the face and run <laughs> um I will see you in Skopje, um, where something dangerous also happens, but a bit more fun and dangerous. <laughs> Morning. Okay, I'm running late, so it's going to be the quickest tour I've ever done, but this is such a lovely backpacker hostel. Um, it's the Toronto Backpackers Hostel, nice and easy. And I just thought I'd, I'd give you a really, really, really quick tour. So this is the idea of a room with these bunks and these cute sofas and some orchids. This sounds really stupid, but this is like the genius thing I've ever seen in the hostel on the shower. You can hang up your clothes and then you can put the shower curtain over so they don't get wet. So many hostels just don't even think about that. It's genius. I love it. And then this is the garden. It's such nice vibes here at night. So yeah, that's my wonderful, wonderful hostel. <laughs> what have you got there, Lua? I took the peanuts from the bar.